Good evening, everybody. Very warm welcome to you to our service of Holy Communion as we mark Maundy Thursday together as a church family and embark on the three great days uh, leading up to Easter Day on Sunday. A very warm welcome to you whether you're here in the building or joining us online and everything that you need for our service this evening will be in these booklets that you um, either got when you came into church or um, there has been a link to this posted uh, on the Facebook page as well. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Let's sit together as we pray the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. So let us confess to Almighty God our sins against his love and ask him to cleanse us. Have mercy on us, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out our offences. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Against you only have we sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Purge us from our sin, and we shall be clean. Wash us, and we shall be whiter than snow. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father forgive you by the death of his Son, and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all your days. Amen. We stand to join in the words of the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So as we sit together, let us pray that we may love one another as Christ has loved us. have invited us to share in the supper which your Son gave to his church, to proclaim his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence, and unite us in his love, 
who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rachel's going to come and bring us our first Bible reading. The second reading is from Corinthians 1, chapter 11, beginning at verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Our Gospel reading this evening comes from John chapter 13, beginning at verse 1. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought also to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, Servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please do have a seat, everyone. I'd invite you to pay attention to how Jesus moves around in our Gospel reading from John chapter 13. He gets up from the table, he takes off his outer robe and he ties a towel around himself. He pours water into a basin. He bends down to wash the disciples' feet, to wipe them with a towel. He has a conversation with Peter only slaves wash feet. Peter is scandalized. But Jesus turns his perspective around to such an extent that he wants to dive headlong into what Jesus is doing. Having finished, Jesus rises back up, puts his robe back on, and returns to the table. This scene is a portrayal of the whole gospel, the whole good news about Jesus in miniature. 
Jesus is one who sits in majesty in God's kingdom, at God's table. He is fully God. And yet, he lays aside his majesty. He takes off the robe of divinity and wraps the towel of humanity around himself. He is fully God and he is fully human. He spends uh, his years of ministry on earth serving those whom society had forgot, perhaps not washing their feet, but being unafraid to be with those who would cause him inconvenience. You do not know what I am doing, he says to Peter, but later you will understand. He reconfigures people's expectations about what God's chosen king, the Messiah, is like as he turns the world the right way up. And then, having lived and died and served and rose again, Jesus ascends into heaven. He comes once again into his Father's kingdom and he takes his seat at the table. And on Maundy Thursday, as we celebrate Jesus washing his disciples' feet, as we give thanks for the gift of Holy Communion, we are taken to the very heart of why Jesus came to earth, to serve. Someone once told a story of a king who loves a lonely maiden. This king has everything that he could ever want, except the person that he desires. He is overcome by his love, but he does not know how to declare his love for her. Slowly, he forms a plan. He begins by thinking how all kings do, thinking about his power and his influence. Should he send an ambassador to inform her that the king has chosen her out of all the women in the kingdom. Surely she would come at once to be by his side. But would she love him? She might say it, but would she live in fear, nursing a hidden grief for the life she left behind? Then the king thought, well, what if I make her like me, a queen? Someone with everything she could ever want. Then we could meet as equals. Again, would that really work? Would she be able to see the person behind the crown, the man behind the money? There is only one thing for it. He will have to approach her as an equal unadorned by the trappings of royalty, dressed simply as a humble, ordinary man, someone just like her. Only then would he be able to cross the gulf between them and declare his love. It is only in love that the unequal can become equal. As he turned this plan over in his mind, the king came to a final, most fundamental realization. He cannot pretend. It cannot be a disguise, for when he removes his mask and reveals his crown, it could not be like he had engineered the whole thing. It would seem like a lie. He will have to take on an entirely new identity in order to declare his love and to win hers, he will have to leave his throne. You might well have recognized the characters in the story for who they are. God is the king. You and I are the lowly maiden. God could remain distant and aloof from humanity except for one thing, and it's right here in John chapter 13. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. God loves us. We don't know why, but it is the reality that guides everything that God is and does. And in Jesus, God leaves aside his majesty. He doesn't cling to equality with God but comes to be with us. 
He doesn't cease to be a king. But in doing all this, he shows us exactly what the white-hot burning centre of being a king, of being God himself, is all about. He serves and loves us to the end. We don't know how that story of the king and the maiden ends. The maiden may reject the king's love. It's a freedom she has to have. Otherwise, love itself is mocked and scorned. But we do know how the story of God with us in Jesus Christ ends. I wonder if you notice the detail I left out of the story. Because Jesus does not only sit back down at the table. He does not only ascend to the kingdom of his Father. He brings us with him. Just as the disciples took up their seats again around the meal table with Jesus, he brings humanity, he brings you and me into God's presence, right to the heart of all things. It's sometimes said that actions speak louder than words. When we behold Jesus washing the feet of his disciples, when we understand that in Jesus we are touching God and God is touching us, we begin to see the great depths of God's love for us. And when we are brought to the end of ourselves by the glory of God's love, we might well say, why? Why does Jesus do this? Why are we invited to the table of the King? John chapter 13, if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. I give you a new commandment, that you should love one another, just as I have loved you, you should love one another. By this will everyone know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Our feet are washed, that we might wash the feet of others. We are touched by the love of God so that we might love others. We are blessed in order that we might be a blessing. However, we are also aware this evening that we cannot obey Jesus' command as we would like. We cannot wash one another's feet. In this tender moment of touch between rabbi and disciples, we are conscious of all the touch that has been deprived people this year. The friendly handshake, the loving hug, the reassuring grasp of the hand on life's journey, even at the moment of death. Instead, people have had to innovate and imagine ways of keeping in touch when touch itself is not possible. We have had to pray that something of that love would touch people's lives, if not their bodies. We have, I think, been convinced, like never before, of the value of being able to be with one another. And as we gather around the table this evening to celebrate the Servant King, let us pray that we, that our church family, that God's whole church around the world would be sent from that table to demonstrate the love of God in both word and action in the name of Jesus, whose actions this evening and in the coming days demonstrate once and for all the depth of God's love for the world. Thanks be to God. Amen.
so in the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father, as may come us to lead us in prayer. Father, on this, the night he was betrayed, your Son, Jesus Christ, his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, hear us and humble us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of our church. Lord, hear us. On this night, he prayed for those who were to believe through his disciples' message. We pray for the mission of your church. Lord, hear us. On this night, he commanded his disciples to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and unloved. Lord, hear us. On this night, he reminded his disciples that if the world hated them, it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, hear us. And, and give us your peace. On this night, he accepted the cup of death and looked forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died at the peace of Christ. Lord, hear us and welcome all your children into paradise. Thank you very much, May. Um, as we come to the next part of our service together where we uh, gather up our praises around God's table, just take this opportunity to uh, say something about the movement of our service today uh, into uh, our worship tomorrow and on Sunday as well. You might notice that at the end of this service there is not uh, a prayer of blessing as we would usually finish with, and that is because uh, in uh, generations gone by and for many, many uh, centuries, the church has celebrated uh, this uh, liturgy, this worship, as really one long service that stretches over three days. And so uh, at the end of our service this evening, as our minds turn to uh, Jesus' prayers in the garden and uh, the cross, we are going to be mindful of that as we uh, depart the church building in silence um, until we return either uh, tomorrow we have a service of reflection at two o'clock if you would like to come to that or uh, on Easter day we're going to be gathering outside in the churchyard um, at six o'clock for our dawn service 
and then here at 10 o'clock for our service of Holy Communion. Just so uh, that we appreciate the, the flow of our worship for the rest of this evening, I thought that I would uh, say that now um, rather than later. And so we celebrate the peace of Jesus Christ. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Whether here in the building or at home, we offer others a sign of peace from where we are. Peace be with you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. Give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you thanks, Father most holy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For on this night he girded himself with a towel, and taking the form of a servant, washed the feet of his disciples. He gave us a new commandment, that we should love one another as he has loved us. Knowing that his hour had come in his great love, he gave this supper to his disciples, to be a memorial of his passion, that we might proclaim his death until he comes again and feast with him in his kingdom. Therefore, earth unites with heaven to sing a new song of praise. We too join with angels and archangels as they proclaim your glory without end. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, 
This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death, until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. So that as we receive here, I invite you to follow the direction of the stewards. If you're worshipping online with us, you might like to use the prayer of spiritual communion that you can find in the middle of page 16 on our orders of service this evening. body and blood of Christ, keep us all in eternal life. Amen.
Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you that in this wonderful sacrament you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruit of your redemption. For you are alive and reign now and forever.
when the disciples had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus prayed to the Father, If it is possible, take this cup of suffering from me. He said to his disciples, How is it that you are not able to keep watch with me for one hour? The hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to the power of sinners. Christ was obedient unto death. Go in his peace. 